Hey everyone, today I'll be taking you through the weekly roundup news once again. For those of you that have been playing, you'll know and see that the pre-patch event is now live across the globe. This event essentially allows you to catch up with gear on alt characters that lack it, if you want to gear up your alts a bit before Shadowlands hits, having access to 100 item level gear from the rare mobs, as well as a chunk of tokens dropping from these rares. These Scourge Stones allow you to purchase Argent Commendations, allowing you to buy additional 100 eye level gear for your character. With there being a ton of rares, only a 20 minute spawn timer, it should be fairly easy to get a solid amount of gear before the expansion hits. Nathanos is also now a world boss, dropping various 115 item level gear for your characters as well. Unfortunately, that means for main characters, there's not really much else to do. However, if you're intrigued with a 34 slot bag or the reins of the blue proto drake, then maybe playing the pre-patch can be for you too. That's right, you can get both of these items from the rare mobs in Ice Crown. The 34 slot bag drops from Bronham, while this prestigious mount drops from Scotty the Ruthless. Other than that, there's also been quite a number of class change hotfixes. They are all in the form of percentage changes, either nerfing or buffing certain specs. Starting with Druids, Ferals have had all of their damage buffed by 8%, while Resto Druids have had their damage nerfed by 5%. This is quite bizarre for PvP, as Ferals are incredibly powerful in the pre-patch, performing superbly well in the 2v2 bracket. The buff to their damage will make them quite the powerhouse, but things could change when Shadowlands gearing hits. Right now, barrels are definitely up there with the top melee in terms of pre-patch meta. That's usually the case in 2v2 though. In 3v3, however, we could see them drop a bit here due to generally being squishier, so it's easier to take down ferals in this bracket. The resto druid damage nerfs won't really change anything for them as they weren't dealing much damage or wouldn't be able to dish out damage most of the time as they would easily fall behind in healing if they did. In Shadowlands though, we expect druids to be getting stronger where this could be a factor, but as of right now, it really doesn't change anything for them in PvP. Up next, we have Frost Mages being hit with an overall nerf. That's because Iceland's damage is currently crazy high on the damage meters in arenas. Nerfing this and buffing other aspects of their damage will hinder their performance quite significantly. They rely heavily on their Iceland's damage as it's the brunt of their pressure as well as being instant. They still have powerful CC, which will certainly keep them viable though. However, Arcane has just as powerful of CC, and it packs way more of a punch than Frost does, which could completely replace the spec in the long run. Windwalker Monks have also been buffed, increasing their damage by 5% across the board. This is quite a scary change, as we know Windwalkers are a top tier melee right now and will gain power in Shadowlands. Right now, I'd say they're performing slightly worse due to the heavy burst nature of the pre-patch, making it easier to force the defensive cooldowns of a Windwalker. It also forces them to kite much more, resulting in a loss of DPS. In Shadowlands, if the game isn't as bursty, we can see Windwalkers becoming harder to kill as well as dealing absurd amounts of damage through their offensive CDs. The class with the most percentage changes though is definitely Paladins, having a number of changes for every specialization. Holy Paladins will be loving these changes, having their overall healing significantly increased. Outside of Avenging Wrath, Holy Paladins were doing significantly weaker healing, so it's no surprise to see their healing get buffed. With the loss of Ineffable Truth, Paladins took a hit much more with the loss of Corruption compared to any other healer. Seeing these heals being buffed lines up nicely for them in PvP. Everyone apart from Prop Paladins will love to see their healing being decreased on themselves as well as having less survivability. However, their ability to heal others remains potent and hopefully is just a pre-patch thing, which doesn't have the same strength when Shadowlands comes around. These changes for Rep Paladins will significantly reduce their burst damage. Their one-shot potential will become much weaker, so it will be easier for players to survive it. That being said, without having huge burst potentials throughout the game, as well as weaker passive damage and uptime, Rep Paladins aren't going to look too promising if more changes aren't implemented. Moving on to Discipline Priests, they've been hit with quite a powerful nerf to both their damage and power word shield healing. Disc has been dealing an absurd amount of damage, so nerfing the fail-proof parts of their damage is justified so that their atonement healing isn't too powerful and effortless. Their power word shield nerf will also be quite big, as it will indirectly reduce the pressure Crystalline Reflection deals. This could force them off the legendary to use something else, we'll just have to wait and see. Lastly, we have quite a number of warrior changes, with both Arms and Fury having their damage increased. Arms has also had an interesting talent change with Cleave. 
This could definitely have its uses in arena now, giving you more consistent cleave pressure, which could be useful especially against heavy cleave comps like jungle cleave, where even spreading pressure on the pet is quite valuable. The downside of this talent before was the fact that you would lose sweeping strikes for it, so having that factor eliminated is making cleave look far more attractive to take, potentially as a staple talent. Outside of that, it's looking even better for warriors now having further damage increase. Again, this was most likely due to their performance in PvE, but for PvP, this could be quite devastating as warriors are already in a top tier spot thanks to their utility. With the combination of an immense toolkit as well as constant pressure, arms warriors could definitely become too good for any other melee to compete with. On the other side of things, it is nice to see Fury receive a damage buff again as well. But without other additional changes or an increase to their utility, they will pale in comparison to the might of Arms Warriors. Without any additional toolkit or giving Fury Warriors Mortal Strike, I can't see them being better than an Arms Warrior in any situation. If for some reason you want to opt for Fury over Arms, then you will almost certainly need to pair up with a Mortal Strike class, such as Windwalker, Hunter, or possibly Rogue and DH. Alright, that concludes the hotfixes, allowing us to move on to near future patch notes. Remember, these are already implemented on the beta, so we may have covered some of these, but we'll showcase the important ones that have changed. One that we covered already was the changes to Demon Hunter's talent Unbound Chaos. This nerf to the spell is huge to DHs as it was giving Demon Hunters great on-demand burst damage. Without additional buffs to Demon Hunters, they are looking quite lackluster as a class themselves. They could still work in certain 3v3 compositions where other tier 1 melee can make up for their weaknesses such as playing with a warrior or a windwalker. However, in 2v2, they could be difficult to do well on at least compared to how powerful they were during BFA 2v2 arena. We also covered how Marksmanship got an additional side effect to their True Shock cooldown. This will allow it to pack more of a punch, most likely being able to force big defensive CDs if left unchecked. Against good teams though, it may not be too relevant of a change if players line of sight the Hunter during these CDs. Similar to a Destro Warlock's Dark Soul, without dishing out the casted damage then line of sighting will always be the best way to deal with these cooldowns. Priests also had quite a number of changes, sadly most of them are nerfs though. The most interesting one is the Power Word Shield nerfs, considering that they didn't nerf these on Shadow Priests, which are probably one of the most overpowered aspects of the Shadow spec. Instead, they nerfed them on their healing specs, which again will hurt Disc Priests due to the power their shields have. Shadow Priests did receive nerfs though in the form of their damage, which will affect their passive and burst pressure. Even though Shadow Priests were performing at a top tier level, I believe that these nerfs are a bit in the wrong direction for PvP. Nerfing their damage too much may result in doing too little pressure, especially considering most teams look to shut down a Shadow Priest pressure from start to finish. In my opinion, the main OP aspect of Shadow was the extra damage mitigation they provide for the team. So, with this being untouched and their damage being nerfed, they should still be strong but may need extra assistance to slay enemy targets. Moving on to Enhancement Shamans, they've had a number of varied changes to quite a lot of their spells. Most notably, the increase of certain damage abilities, especially Elemental Blast, which buffs an already staple talent that you would pick. The other big change is Healing Surge healing a lot more making the off-healing of Enhancement Shamans very strong. This makes the hybrid aspect of an Enhancement Shaman much more attractive, being a constant support in terms of HPS. However, with no other changes to their defense, they could still be far too squishy in 3v3 scenarios. That being said, if you pair Enhance with a class that can support them as well with the increased damage plus healing of an Enhancement Shaman, they could be deadly. One last yet quite big change is a PvP-specific one allowing Root and Fear effects to be more durable while afflicted players are being damaged. This will be a buff to any classes that use these two CC effects often. For those that are a bit confused what this does, it basically means that Dot effects are less likely to break Root and Fear effects. Striking enemies directly for big hits will still end up breaking these CC effects. Specifically, this will be nice for Priests and Warlocks, given that they fear often and usually have Dots up on their target. This will make their CC less likely to break in these situations. Alright, after seeing all these changes, how do you guys feel about the hotfixes and upcoming changes? Let us know in the comments down below. Moving on to the beta build now, most changes aren't really significant, but we will go over causes for concern in Shadowlands PvP. 
there was not many significant changes that we haven't already covered in the beta build. The only really significant one is Yulon's Whisper being significantly nerfed for Mistweavers, who will most likely use other legendary affixes now. While this looked appealing for a short time, it now doesn't after this nerf, severely hindering it, making other legendaries more appealing. Although there isn't much beta build changes to talk about, this does raise a cause for concern for other classes and specs that aren't really performing too well. One that may come to mind is Demon Hunter in general. Having one viable spec in Arena, if Havoc isn't performing too well, which is the case right now, then Demon Hunters will be a rare species in Arena. Unbound Chaos did bring life to Demon Hunters, giving them extra damage. But with this being changed and ultimately nerfed, that hope for Demon Hunters has disappeared. There is time during now and even the beginning of Shadowlands to make changes to their classes so that there is still hope for Demon Hunters to have some form of buffs. Without these buffs, they may be too weak of the spec, resulting in little to no representation at high-end arenas. We've seen this happen mainly with the likes of Enhancement Shamans, Outlaw Rogues, Marksmanship Hunters, and Fury Warriors during the last season of BFA. On the other side of the spectrum, Prop Paladins are incredibly overpowered on the pre-patch and still looking strong on the beta. Basically, they are an extra healer with added utility, allowing their team to survive with ease until greater dampening stages of the game. While playing prot specs in general can be quite challenging and fun for the user, many people playing against prot specs are usually frustrated. Having to deal with certain aspects of prot paladins can be incredibly obnoxious to deal with. In this case, having nearly all of their healing done be an instant ability topping themselves or their partners even from very low health. If nothing changes, we will most likely be seeing prot paladin in 3v3 at the very least, possibly in 2v2 as well which we see a lot of on the pre-patch at the moment. So my question for all of you is, do you mind facing prot specs in Arena? Once again, let us know down below. All right, that brings us to our last topic of this week's news about Classic WoW once again, but on the hot fixes. There have been a number of bug fixes that have been addressed, mainly ability and equipment usage changes. One big bug was the exploits in Warsong Gulch that players would use, which has now been resolved. Remember, Nax Ramis is also set to come out on the 1st of December, allowing players to participate in the end game raid of Classic WoW. All right, that's it for this week's news roundup for World of Warcraft. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and feel free to leave any comments down below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you all next time.